the beginning that you have made me. Some of the most renowned green architects and designers in the world spoke at the recent Jerusalem Seminar in Architecture. They were asking, how do we design for a sustainable future? These people have built some of the most energy efficient and beautiful structures on the planet. Dr. Ken Yang chaired the conference. His buildings and landscapes are known to daringly integrate human structures and living plants. A biochromatic skyscraper. It's a skyscraper that is designed to respond to the climate of the place. So for instance, uh, we look at the seasons, we look at the rainfall, we look at the sun path, we look at the wind, and we use all these factors to help us make the building low energy. But most architects were not brought up in ecology. Most architects were, were trained, that I'm practicing today, are probably trained in the 60s and 70s, and during the 60s and 70s, oil was so cheap that nobody bothered to design green buildings. People comment on it, but they don't, don't always say it's beautiful. Some say it's ugly, some say they're strange. But I try and make them beautiful because if a building's not beautiful, it will not be accepted by the common layman. Whatever we do, we, you know, we are artists at the same time, so we have to make them aesthetically fulfilling uh, for the people who use and uh, uh, look at the building. As part of the conference, students from universities throughout Israel competed in creating a green design for a community center in Jerusalem. I hope that in 10 years time, well maybe that's too soon, but one day, I hope to see that day where we're not discussing sustainability anymore because it should be something that is 100% part of the way we think. The Musrara community center would be located on the border between Jewish and Muslim neighborhoods on a road that until 1967 was a barbed wire no man's land between Israel and Jordan. The competition was judged by the visiting architects. The winner, to be announced on the second day of the conference, wouldn't get to actually build the community center, but would get a travel grant to visit green architecture sites around the world. Michael McDonough, an architect and designer from New York, challenged us to make our ideas as simple as possible. Because Einstein, some of you may have heard of him, he said that any theory you have that you can't explain to a taxi driver ain't worth a damn. The petroleum fossil fuel based economy is very simple. It's like hitting, picking up a rock and hitting something with a rock. But with green building, you don't need a rock, you need a rocket. You really need a lot of brain power. Traditionally, this was done collectively over a period of hundreds of years or thousands of years. And that's why so many indigenous or vernacular building technologies work so brilliantly. They were very constrained and they had to work collectively. They only had wood or they only had stone. And so they had to optimize that system because the guys that didn't died. What happened with petroleum is it's very powerful. One barrel of oil has 25,000 man-hours of labor in it, and we could do all kinds of things with that that we never could before, and it got us drunk with power. Five decades later, we realized, you screwed up. Do I say turn the clock back and you know go back to collective uh, building using only indigenous materials? No, no, but there are lessons there. What we need now is to bring the thing into balance. We need to learn from what was. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. You know, and we need to acknowledge that's a kind of humility. But also we have tremendous power, technological and other power, and we should take advantage of it, because we have new sets of problems. The population of the world now is much greater than it was when it was just rocks or local sticks. You know, and the climate is more complex. We have a global economy. It's a very different situation. So that's what I think is the optimization of the old and the new. It's your world, and we screwed it up. So my responsibility is to give you the tools to fix it when I'm gone. Your responsibility is to pick up the tools and learn how to use them. And you better get busy, because we screwed it up a lot, and we don't have a lot of time left.